Now, on these pistol sales records, we also have an inf uh, a box here that indicates serial number. Yes. Okay. To your knowledge, does every firearm have a unique serial number? Yes, they do. Was the defendant with anyone when he made this purchase of the six hour nine millimeter? Yes. And tell me about that, please. Um, Mr. Crumbly had another gentleman with him, a younger guy. Um, and when I came out of the office, him and the gentleman, he was standing at the counter, the showcase. When we say gentleman, did you come to learn who that person was? Yes, his son. Okay. Um, he was standing at the showcase and the, his son was standing behind him. Okay. Um, I approached um, a customer prior to Mr. Crumbly and he directed me to go ahead and take care of Mr. Crumbly first. So I did. Mr. Crumbly asked to see the um, six hour, said he had had his eye on that for quite some time. And just because he is a familiar face to our store, I looked at him and said, you know the drill, I need your license. Um, took that, made copies uh, while he was filling out his um, application. Okay. And um, once that was done, um, I ran him and through the NICS system for his background check. Um, and once I finished that up, I told Mr. Crumbly, um, he was in research, um, that Chris, which is another employer, would be taking his cell over. Um, Mr. Crumbly stated, I know it usually takes a while for my research. Okay. And him and his son walked away, went over to the holster wall. Um, I don't recall any interaction with them once they walked away from the counter. Okay. So before you helped them, before the defendant pointed to the 9mm SIG, did he shop around at all or did he just point to that gun? Uh, as I came out of the office, they were right at the showcase with that gun. Okay. That was the only one he picked out. Now, for this gun, the SIG Sauer, did he pay uh, with cash or credit card? Um, I did not uh, finish the transaction, but through what I saw, observed from the office side of it. Sure, as your role as an office manager, could you, were you able to tell us? Yes, it okay. was cash. Okay, and how were you able to make that determination? Uh, through receipts. Okay. I'm going to show you Exhibit 39. This is um, a portion of a firearms transaction record. It's zoomed in so you can see it. May I approach the witness? Sure. Ms. Beck, this is the I'm going to show this to you. This is a three page document. What have I just handed you? Uh, the application. Okay, that's the 4473? Yes. Okay. So we seem to be referring to the same thing as either a 4473, a firearms transaction record, or an application. Is that right? Yes. Okay. So um, what we're looking at on the screen here, is that a zoomed in portion of that application? Yes. Now, part of this application indicates a number of questions that the applicant has to answer yes or no. Would that be right? Correct. Okay, so if you can see on the screen, under box 21, there's questions A, B, C, D, and E. Yes. Tell us what these are. So these, um, so A is asking, are you going to be the one to leave with the gun? Yes, and then the other ones, are you a felony, military, um, you know, any drug, depressant, um, questions of that kind of sort. Okay, so A says, are you the actual transferee slash buyer of the firearm listed on this form and any continuation sheet, ATF form 5300.9A? And then it has a bolded warning, what does that say? Uh, you are not the actual, you are not the actual transferee buyer if you are requiring a firearm on behalf of another person. If you are not the actual transferee buyer of the license, cannot transfer the firearm to you. And he checked yes, that it was for him? Yes. All right. Um, B is, are you under indictment for, for any felony? You check no to that? Right. C, have you been convicted in any court, including military court of a felony? Check no for that. D, 
Are you a fugitive? He also checked no for that. Correct. E, are you an awful, unlawful user of or addicted to marijuana or any other depressant, depressant stimulant, narcotic drug, or controlled substance? With a warning, the use or possession of marijuana remains unlawful under federal law guidelines regardless whether it's been legalized or decriminalized mm -hmm. for medicinal or recreational purposes in the state where you reside. You check note of that. Correct. Okay. And this is the same form that was so was filled out by James Crumbly every time he made a purchase from the store? Yes. And he answered the questions in the same way? Yes. Now, you don't do any research as a office manager of a federal firearms licensed dealer to investigate if what he said in these these questions are true or false. Is that right? No. <clears throat> oh, here's the, the front of the, the form here. This is the same exhibit, Exhibit 39? Yes. Okay. Now, did the six hour the six hour come in a uh, plastic case? Yes, it did. Now, this case itself does not have a locking mechanism. Is that correct? The case, no. Okay. And are you able to identify if this was, in fact, the case sold to James Crumley with that six hour? Yes. Okay. May I approach? Sure. This is Exhibit 41. It has been stipulated, too. So what are we looking at on the side of this case here? Um, you're looking at, are we talking the bold, the black? Right here. S and, what does SN mean? So that's the serial number. Okay. Which is written in box three on the application. Okay. But I can also identify it as to the stock number that I put on each box when a firearm comes in. So 21-10620 matches up to the box. Okay, so you can be sure that this is in fact the, the case that the gun was sold. Yes. Okay. So you mentioned that this case itself doesn't have its own locking mechanism. No. When you sold the gun to James Crumley on November the 26th, did he fill out the trigger lock statement? He did. And did you as well? I did. Okay. And in that trigger lock statement, did you indicate that a lock had been provided to yes. Mr. Crumley? Yes. Okay. So first, I'm going to open this up because I have gloves on. Sure. Let's show the jury. And this case is provided, it has an insignia SIG on it. Yes. So this is provided by SIG Sauer, the manufacturer of the gun? Yes. Okay. What kind of lock was provided to Mr. Crumbly on November the 26th? Uh, cable lock. Okay. And was that cable lock, in fact, provided to your store from SIG Sauer? Yes. So this is Exhibit 40. This is the trigger lock statement from November the 26th, 2021. And this indicates that you did, in fact, provide him with that? Yes. Okay. And it says, or a gun case or storage container that can be secured to prevent unauthorized access. So this doesn't have a locking mechanism on it, correct? It does not. Okay. So I want to show you now Exhibit 97. Exhibit 97, specifically the on the right part of the screen here. What do we see here? Um, we see the child hand guide safety, we need the cable lock, and the two clips. And when you say the cable lock, was this was this cable lock and that pamphlet provided with James Crumley when he bought the bought the six hour on November the twenty sixth? Yes. One moment, Your Honor. Oh, thank you. I don't know if I asked you or not, but this is the type of lock that was provided by Sig Sauer at the time this firearm was sold? 
Yes. Okay, thank you. Nothing further.